It's time for Goten to shine just enough. Chi Chi too. What's up everybody, Stevdez here and welcome to another edition of Dragon Ball Days. Well, Sean, you couldn't help but comment when it was right there, just outside your reach, so here you go. And for all those fans who aren't fans of what if Goten was born first on this channel, here's a recap to get you caught up. As for the fans of this what if, here you go. Thanks, Shine, in the comments below. Every time I get a what if suggestion or what what ifs you all want to see, I put it in a list. And because Shine, I believe it was Shine, that commented this some time ago, it was put into that spot on the list. So, thanks to him, you're getting the next part today. In the last part, Bulma, Goten, Chi Chi, and Tien all went to Namek. They all got upgraded, they alerted Frieza to their presence, thanks to Goten's moods, and with the help of Vegeta, fought against the Ginyu Force. Now, Vegeta's out of commission, Tien isn't strong enough to hold off Raccoon, and Chi-Chi is watching worried as her son has taken a stand against the big brute of the Ginyu Force. However, there is something to consider as far as the difference between Canon Goten and this Goten. Roll the clip. However, there is something to consider when it comes down to the difference between this Goten and the Canon Goten. Roll the clip, Schmidt. Well, at least Goten will get a little smarter with his trip to Namek. Not bad. Yeah, that joke wasn't exaggerating. In all honesty, this Goten is much smarter. In fact, one of the books that Chi Chi has, I'd like to incorporate because it's... Well, it does have a Chinese author, and this is inspired by Chinese folklore. Remember, Dragon Ball was inspired by Journey to the West. So, why not add another piece of Chinese literature, Sun Tzu's The Art of War. This would be one of the lessons that Goten would learn on the way to Namek, and thanks to Tien being there, he can get more of a fighter's edge towards this quote. If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know yourself, but not the enemy, for every victory gained, you will suffer a defeat. If you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle." Unquote. And so, with Tian's expertise, he's able to help the kid really understand what this means. You need to understand where your limits are, you need to know what your opponent's going to think ahead of time in order to predict them and counter them at every given opportunity. So it wouldn't just be boring books that Chi Chi would bring, but because Goten's into fighting, a couple of good books for that will suffice. I mean, after all, he can still learn something from the martial arts. In this situation, he's been observing the battle against Raccoon the way Vegeta's been fighting him, so now is his time to try to think of a plan, and he thinks he's got one. His main goal is to distract so that his dad and Mr. Piccolo can arrive on Namek, so he marches up to the taunting brute ready to enact it. You might have gotten a good sucker punch on me, but you're no match for the Ginyu Force! Yeah? Well, at least I can pose way better than you can. This causes the big man to freeze in place. He just challenged one of Captain Ginyu's mighty poses. You're all talk, kid! You can't pose worth anything! Oh yeah? Try this! No dice! This one's better! Nah, this one! Back and forth, back and forth, the two end up trading poses. Vegeta unable to believe that this is working. Eventually, Vegeta catches on, turning to Tien, telling him to give him energy so he can get back in the fight. However, Jace is starting to find this kind of annoying, and the kid needs to be punished the proper way. Raccoon! <clears throat> Raccoon! Just finish the kid off already! It's clear he's stalling for something! Alright kid, nice try, but all this has gotta stop. 
I gotta beat you up now. Goten gets nervous, dodging the brood around for a bit, and only really getting a hit when he can. He is, however, powerful enough for Goku and Piccolo to arrive in the middle of the fight. By that point, Goten is on the ground, and Chi Chi knows that Goten needs help, so she rushes in to defend Goten from the giant bringing his arm down on the two. In a flash, Raccoon brings his arm down, and it's blocked by a green man's arm? It's Piccolo. But what about Goku? Why isn't Goku defending him? Well, he is. In that flash, Goku was quick enough to pick up both his wife and child and get them away. He kneels down to the two and they have a family hug. You know, he makes sure they're okay. While Piccolo takes on Raccoon. This goes just about as good as the anime, with the body swap with Goku happening because Piccolo has to chase Vegeta after Raccoon and Birda are dead. He doesn't want Vegeta getting away and starting something when he goes to freeze his ship to try to get the Dragon Balls. After all is said and done, the wounded Goku doesn't actually have to go into the healing pod, he has his wife's healing power to help him out. Therefore, Goku is in the beginning of this. The group even make the wishes that they needed, reviving Chaozu and Krillin and using their third wish to bring Krillin to Namek. And so the roster against Frieza goes Tien, Piccolo, Goku, Goten, Krillin, Chi Chi, and Dende when he arrives, you know, to use the Dragon Balls. Oh, and Vegeta. Thanks to his training on King Kai's planet, Krillin is up there with the power levels. Having mastered Kaioken and the Spirit Bomb, that does come into play in the fight against Frieza. In the first form, Vegeta is still headstrong, so he ends up fighting the first form Frieza. After his transformation, Tien and Goten join the fold, while Piccolo, Goku, and Krillin are watching to see if there's any sort of weak point this Frieza guy has. Finally, the third form shows up, and clearly they're on the back foot, but Piccolo has not fused with nail. Nope. So, suffice it to say he's weaker. He does hop in to help, but the third form Frieza is really powerful for Goten, Vegeta, Tien, and Piccolo to end up handling. This is where Krillin comes in. This lower form of Kaioken buffs him up, but it doesn't use a whole lot of stamina, allowing him to hold the form a lot longer. Plus, he's had about times four mastered by this point, so pumping himself up to match Frieza's third form wouldn't be hard for Krillin here. Plus, it's not only that Kaioken we get, but we also get a spirit bomb similar to the one that Goku used on Vegeta during the Saiyan Saga. With all the planets surrounding, Krillin just has enough energy to make that spirit bomb. After that spirit bomb, we do get the fourth form of Frieza, and yeah, Dende is killed, but Frieza doesn't know that Chi Chi's been doing some of the healing on the side as well. After Vegeta is downed, we get Goten running in front of Vegeta to cover him, and in front of Goten, this causes Goku to defend Goten. Meaning Vegeta doesn't die here. After Goku gets his turn with Frieza and Vegeta is healed by Chi Chi, Vegeta goes back in and Krillin and Goku begin talking. There's gotta be some way to stop this guy. And that's when Goku realized that the small spirit bomb did do something to Frieza. Maybe if they made a bigger one, this could work. After Vegeta's beaten aside again, we get Piccolo and Goten joining forces while both Goku and Krillin are charging a spirit bomb twice the size in order to drop on Frieza. But we all know how that trope plays out painfully well. Even a double powered spirit bomb is not enough to kill the tyrant. It's enough to wound him pretty well, but he's still able to get up and he's still able to do his evil stuff. This, of course, results in the deaths of some of the Z-Warriors. Tien is the first one to die. I mean, you know what, put the meme up. 
You know he would have pissed Frieza off eventually. Piccolo then knocks Goku out of the way like in canon and takes a death beam to the chest. After Piccolo goes down, Goten gets a rage boost here and ends up holding his own against Frieza. However, Vegeta has to come in with the assist because Goten can't keep it up forever. Chi Chi takes this opportunity to go to her son and use the last of her power in order to heal him. However, this was a bad move. She's kind of healing Goten out in the open. And Frieza sees this, launching the same attack that killed Krillin in the cannon, and sure enough, Chi Chi dies here. In front of everybody, she's lifted and blown up in midair, causing the Super Saiyan transformation that we all know and love coming out of her husband, Goku. Yeah, I'm not gonna have Goten be a Super Saiyan here just because he already had a rage boost and I doubt he's got... He's smarter than Goku, he can hold on to his anger spells a lot better. The shock of his friends dying was already huge, but when it comes down to his wife, we're gonna get something a little bit more potent than grade one. We're getting grade two Super Saiyan with the death of Chi Chi. Goku can barely make words out at this point, looking down at Goten and telling him, go. Just one word, go. No way, dad. I can't let you fight alone against this guy. That's when Goku controls his energy in his right hand and knocks him out with a quick chop to the back of the head. Goku turns to Krillin and glares. Go, Piccolo, Goten. Uh, grab them and go. There is one revelation here. Vegeta's still alive. He's weak, but Frieza didn't kill him. Thanks to Chi Chi's healing, they were able to save a Sensu Bean. So, you know, Krillin does his thing. So, you know, Sensu Bean. Vegeta then gets up, grabs Goten, and helps Krillin out. Krillin grabs Piccolo and Tien, and Vegeta grabs Goten out of respect for the young warrior. This, this young man seems to have a good head on his shoulders. The fight goes much better than the anime with Goku completely destroying Frieza out of anger. The fact that he was able to hold his anger this long is surprising indeed. It shows the light heart of Goku. Just like the anime, Goku ends up going to Yardrat because he doesn't know how to program a ship and the crew end up leaving. Bulma piloting the Capsule Corp ship to Earth. Namek is not destroyed. And so, when it comes down to summoning Shenron, the main wish is to revive all the Namekians and anyone that was killed by Frieza. This means Tien does come back to life, and they don't really have to use a wish on the dragon. They got their wishes for Paranga, and Namek's still there. With that wish, the Namekians are brought back to life. Everything returns to normal. There is one thing to gather from this. Nail is still on Namek, so Piccolo is going to be weaker in the future. But, as far as the future saga and the androids are concerned, this is where we're going to be leaving this timeline for right now. So what do you think? With Frieza gone, how might proceedings end up? What about future Goten's involvement with this timeline? And what about Chi Chi's healing ability? Do you think that's going to come into play? Go ahead and leave a comment below! For more what ifs in the realm of video gaming and Dragon Ball alike, such as if Broly had landed on Namek, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Ciao. Oh yeah? Try this. <laughs> Dab. <laughs>